All right, down two section headers. Down most commonly at the bottom. They don't strictly have to be at the bottom. They could be literally right after the program headers, but most commonly you'll see them at the bottom. So drill down on that. Oh, it's not zooming. Okay. All right, so here's our section header information. And we care about it all. Awesome. Okay, so first thing, sh name. This is an offset into the string table that I mentioned before where you can find the name of this section. So it is going to be a, and well, okay, so if there's just straight up null table, it can point, so a section doesn't have to necessarily have a name. It can just point directly at a, a null byte, and then it would be a zero size thing. But, uh, but basically what this is saying is that whereas on PE files, you only have eight bytes, and you got to fit your name in that, right? There's a fixed eight bytes, and it may or may not have a null terminator. Here, the name is just a pointer into that string table, so you can have as long of a name as you want for your section. And you kind of see that in our files. I wish I would have set the uh, lock screen lock time much higher. But. All right, so in our files, when we did that, Whoops. Yes. So we did read alf l on this thing, and we got this mapping to these other things. You can see we've got some longer names, right? Dot .gnu, dot .version, <laughs> underscore r. We got dot .rela, dot .plt, dot .eh, exception, frame, and header, that sort of thing, right? So your sec section names can be as long as you want because this, head this name field in the section headers is just a pointer into that string table and it's just expecting a null terminated string. All right, so that's one way that it's different again. So then there's the sh type field, and there's a ton of different types. I think I have, do I have the, okay, so I, I, sh I talk about the, um, the types here. Mm, I'll talk about it. No. So the thing is basically with the type field, there's going to be a whole bunch of special purpose type types for sections. And so the whole point of the type for a section header is it's basically going to say to the linker, this is where you should store, you know, your import address table information. This is where you should store your exception handling information and so forth. So the, the specification for ELF is going to lay out a bunch of different section types which can be reused. You can have a generic section type, like this is just, you know, generic data. But then there's also a bunch of little specific kind of section types that will use for specific things. So We'll kind, of, uh, we'll kind of show a few of those in a little bit, but, but just wanted to say that this um, is different from the sections that we had back in PE because whereas previously sections were just sort of like it's got some data and it's going to be mapped in and if it was anything special, it was special because it was uh, because of the uh, something pointed to by the data directory here the linker is going to have specific types that it uses for different sections to keep track of where information is at. Oh, I guess I did talk immediately about some types. Okay. Uh, this is a type probe bits. This is the catch-all, basically. So if it's just called probe bits, it's, you know, it can be code, it can be data, it's just whatever. It's, probe bits is basically saying this is not a special section. Everything besides probe bits means it is some special section that's predefined in the specification. Right, so on that special section that we call the string table, it's got to have a type of string table. And that has to match up so that when you have that ELF header pointing at a particular entry, it better have a string table type, right? Dynamic, as we already sort of mentioned, you got dynamic up at the program header information, and that's because, as I said, you don't need section headers to run. The dynamic linker needs to just depend on the program headers, but down here at this level, you do have, you know, when you're linking across multiple different things, you know, if this.c file imports uh, functions from somewhere and this.c file imports functions from somewhere, you're going to get 2.0 files and they're each going to have sections. They're each going to have, you know, a need for an equivalent of an import address table. And then eventually when you link everything together, there's going to be, you know, one major import address table and that's going to be the dynamic uh, linking uh, section basically. So that's for keeping that sort of information. No bits is for BSS, essentially. And I think that's pretty much, okay. So then I, 
I threw in some other things, but we really don't care about these. Symbol table, that's more like debugging information. Uh, dynamic symbols, yep. So I'm pretty much going to skip those. But you can go back and uh, read those or read the specification if you care. All right. Sections can have flags as well, and these flags are, again, along the lines of, of uh, things like permissions. So you've got writability or not. But uh, then there's things like allocation and ex exec instructions. I believe that's execute instructions. Um, and to be honest, I don't remember what exec instructions does, but I'm thinking that's probably going to be used for the... Uh, for sections that contain code. I definitely don't remember what alloc does. Declares whether the section is going to occupy memory during program execution. I guess it's saying if it doesn't have the alloc flag set, you can kind of think of it as a discardable thing. And uh, that section will be, you know, potentially mapped into memory. But if you've got section editor information and you don't set the alloc flag, then that can be something that can actually be thrown away. If I'm interpreting my own slides correctly. So we didn't get to section headers with the last class. And I wasn't sure if I'd get to them with this class, but we're still going to push on through. All right. So SE address, this is the virtual address where the section is going to start if uh, it gets mapped into memory. Offset is, again, the file <coughs> offset. All right, so that's back just like the, uh, the data sizes and things like that. So size is then the section size in bytes. So we only have, this is another one of those cases, I'm trying to think, where did we see this last? It was the debug information in the PE files. In the debug information in PE files, we had a memory address, and we had a file address, and we had a single size saying that these two cannot differ, right? So that's what we have the same situation going on here for the section headers. So other things like the type will tell us whether or not, you know, it's no bits, and so it's a BSS section. Right? So, but if it's a BSS section, it'll still have the size that's equal to the total BSS size. It won't say, like, here's my memory size versus my, my file size. But it'll say it's no bits, so implicitly it will not, the, the size, the single size will not be used as a file size because it's got type no bits. All right, so again, we've got a virtual memory start to a section. We've got a file start to a section. And we've got a single size for the uh, section in bytes unless it's like a no-bits section. I don't know why I put this in blue, but this is just straight out of the specification, basically just explaining to you. I think all I'm trying to say right here is that if you want to go find out for all of these specific different types, uh, you know, what does it mean, then you can go ahead and go to the specification and read this link and in info uh, field. All right. Now we have SH adder align. So this is alignment uh, constraints on the section, but this is typically not going to be something like hex 1000. This is more like, let's say you've got some code section, right? And you know on x86 that x86 likes to be 16 byte aligned or something like that. And so this would say, I want this section to be started at a multiple of, si hex of 16, basically. So you'd want to make sure that this section doesn't like get mapped into memory at you know, 400,001, for instance. You'd want to make sure it's 400,010 because you need to have some section alignment. And so this is just used so that on file, you put all the section headers together with each other and they're going to specify where the file data is. But in memory, you want to make sure that they're still on appropriate alignments if they have any extra constraints. So the most, the, the, the most thing that comes to mind with that is you know, code will often have alignment uh, things for optimization purposes. And so I would use that to, to set it to 16-byte uh, aligned, basically. But overall, this has to be a multiple of two. All right, so if the particular section has uh, within it an array of other structures, basically, then, so basically, if you see that the type says that it's one of these special things like a symbol table, where it's going to have all your debugging structures built in, then this entry type is going to say what the size of each of those debugging things is. So basically, just knowing that it's a symbol table section is not enough to tell you like what the size of each of the subsequent symbol table uh, data structures is going to be. 
So that's what this thing is for. And so as you can see, it's just used with some particular special uh, types of sections. Okay, so here's some of the, the table showing all of the different uh, by convention things that they're set to. Special sections, here's uh, some of the names. Mm, kind of already, I mean, these are basically the same as what you, well, things like dot .text, BSS data and R data, those are the same. Although I think this should be dot .ro data. I'm sure that should be .ro data. Because I don't think they use yeah, .ro data. All right, debug is where debug information would go. Um, comment is just version information typically. The note, whatever that says, doesn't really matter. But these are some of the more uh, important ones. The things like the interp, which we already saw, is the equivalent of the interp segment. The dynamic, which is the equivalent of the dynamic segment. So it's either the dynamic linker itself and the dynamic linking information. Dyn string, this is, so it says string table for dynamic linking. This would be sort of like back, way back in IAT, we had INT and IAT, right? And the INT pointed at some other thing. INT pointed at hint name things, right? So if you remove the hint, you can think of this uh, Dyn string as sort of the names table, not the import names table that has RVAs, but the actual names that are pointed to by the by those RVAs. And uh, DynSim, dynamic linking symbol table, that's just if you have symbols built in in the table again. String to them, yeah. Went overboard with the writing of uh, sections here. But I guess this is, like I said, where we start to, to care. Uh, global offset table dot got. Um, this is, as it says, it's used for position independent code. So if you do the F pick option, uh, this will be used to, to find uh, relative offsets to other globals and things like that. The PLT is used for your um, delay load imports, your dynamic imports, things like that. But the PLT is the actual, you can think of it like the delay load import address table, whereas the got PLT, I believe, is going to be sort of the location where there's stubs. But don't quote me on that because i got a picture coming up which will correct me if I'm wrong. All right, rel star stuff is relocation sections. Constructors and destructors are typically used for C stuff, but actually it's a weird sort of thing, as Corey said in the, in the Exploits 1 class, that even when you're not writing C++ code, the GCC will actually tack on these constructor destructor stuff and you may not be using it at all but that means that there's this thing that exploits can reutilize because there's some function pointer that's getting called when you're starting and more importantly there's a function pointer that gets called when you're quitting the program so basically if you buffer overflow overwrite this function pointer and then crash the program and it's trying to quit down and it's calling the destructor it will invoke the attacker's code before it has a chance to exit 